Hi folks, I'm Wes and welcome to Easy Finances. We're going to have another update on the portfolio and I'm going to say a few words on what I think about the Fed meeting yesterday and what that means for investors. Okay, welcome back. And first off, as a disclaimer, I'm not a certified financial advisor. If you have questions about your situation, please find one. And with that in mind, let's get on with our update. So the first thing you'll notice is that we're up to $201.36, and that represents a that's two different deposits that we'll see in the activity here. I had a $17 deposit and a $10 deposit. See overall that we have a 9.31% return is what we're showing with $18.99 as a gain. Of that, $2.92 is earned dividends, if we go to the one day, we look like we're up $1.16 or 0.58% with our biggest gainers being growth and then high dividend yield, individual dividend picks, and ETFs being last today. Overall, if we look at the, at, at the uh, winners here, we have individual dividend picks, we have growth, which has surpassed ETFs only and now represents a 10.12% gain and is second place with ETFs in third and high dividend yield coming in last. So we go back to the one day, we can see the different returns here with four cents earned in dividends today. We go to the one week, we got $2.80 up 1.55% and growth winning out for the week with four cents earned, which was earned today. For the month, we got $3.07. We got earned dividends of 28 cents and up 1.98%. The largest winner is growth for the month. Seeing a theme here. The growth stocks are winning out. $6.31 on the quarter, with 61 cents being earned in dividends, 6.53% return. Growth winning out again. And if we go overall, we've already seen those. Switch, switching over to the activity here, we see that we had 67 buys on, uh, that was today, and the $10 weekly input there. And then I did put the $17 in, uh, had a bonus at work, and I thought, well, this is a good opportunity to show what you do when you have a bonus. So obviously I put most of my, my bonus into a, uh, my main account, but for the deposit or for this reason, I wanted to get up to $200, and we've done that. We also see that we have dividends, Johnson and Johnson for one cent, and this investment corporation, AGNC, which is a REIT, had 67 buys on the 10th with that six with that $17 input, and we also received dividends from Six Flags Corporation and a southern company. We want to show our ETF only uh, portfolio so here we go we're up $4.67 with a 9.24 percent return. We got our VTI as you can see right here we ha we've gained a total of 56 cents in dividends. Today it looks like we're down just a little bit in ETF so as you can see across the market that was uh, a little bit different. It's been a kind of strange day for that but the week, the month, the quarter. I want to see dividends for that. So on the day, our stock market is probably doing the best with bonds uh, slightly lower and REITs lower as well. Okay, so the Fed had a meeting yesterday, and as you can see over here, uh, they made the decision that interest rates will be left unchanged and they see no indications of changing it throughout 2020. So they kept the benchmark rate at 1.5 to 1.75% and like I said they're, they're not planning on uh, making any more changes in 2020. So what I wanted to talk about is what that means for on, on several different levels here. So if, on the investor side the low rate on treasury bonds um, means people are looking for somewhere else to park their money, really. 
if you if you think about it if you, if you're not getting much of a return on something why would you keep your money in it so savings accounts barely keep up with the inflation uh, treasury bonds are the same and those would be the the two safest uh, vehicles normally for people to park their money to make a little bit better than inflation and um, hedge against just losing value on the, on what they have so corporate bonds they maybe do a little bit better than inflation and uh, so you see those rising a little bit and in their value but the yields are going down so well in treasury bonds specifically they're going down in corporate bonds I, I guess it depends on the corporation so you can you can get some pretty good rates or you could get some uh, bad rates but you will see those the values rising on those so that's why you see what I think is is a little bit of a bubble but but uh, with stocks you see a much better return than inflation as far as the yield and um, you know dividend paying stocks they pay they pay better than treasury bonds uh, better than the savings account so that's where the action is everybody's putting money in there on the investor side on the corporate side it's a little bit different so the corporate corporate side uh, the low rate means it is uh, cheap to borrow and it may uh, it may not always be so they need to get while the getting's good basically um, they want to complete expansion projects with borrowed money Let's see what else would they want to do. They would want to uh, conduct research and and development with borrowed money. And what this means for consumers is the jobs are plentiful. These companies are <clears throat> are hiring. So to complete these projects and to conduct research, they have to hire, right? So with uh, plentiful jobs, they have cheap borrowing rates for homes, cars, etc. They have jobs. They have it's cheap to borrow, so all of these things are going through the roof. So you see, real estate going up. You see, um, you know, car car buying should go up. I think Tesla's <laughs> showing showing all the other car companies up on that one. And then uh, there's really little incentive for for the consumer to save right now. So putting their money in a savings account doesn't make a lot of sense when they could be borrowing, put you know, getting the things that they need now while they have the jobs. That's typically what they do. I mean, I'm not saying that's the wisest thing to do, but that that's that's typically how that works, or it seems to anyway. And then um, the conclusion of all of this is, with all of these firing the way they are, is until the Fed rates go up <clears throat> significantly because of inflation or the job market starts heading south, I see growth ahead. So with growth, the stock market is the place to be. These companies are going to continue to grow. They're going to continue to get cheap money. They're going to continue to to make new jobs, and I I see nothing but up for the foreseeable future. Now that that doesn't mean that it, something can't change. I mean, you get you know some trade debacle or or something come up or some huge political event, then of course that could change and people's sentiments could uh, they could hold back on spending and start getting scared and, and hoarding money away in other places. But for now, uh, everything's firing on all cylinders. And, you know, that, that could scare some people. But I think right now the stock market is the place to be. Obviously, you're going to want to operate according to your tolerances. And I'm probably going to make a video on that next week. So stay tuned. But that's that's where we're at in this economy. It's booming. It's a booming economy. The companies have a lot of cheap money to make their projects. There's a lot of investment. There, there's just money going around everywhere. There is one thing that, that might concern me about uh, the heating up of the economy, and we saw it uh, probably a month ago or so, where liquidity was a little bit low. So there wasn't enough cash to go around, and, and the Fed had to basically print money and put it into circulation so that banks could uh, have money to, to lend out to people. So... The demand was so great, not only from individual investors, but from other banks, you know, to uh, get because the, they borrow money from each other and such. So, but the demand was so great that there was not enough money available, and uh, that is something that we need to keep an eye on because printing too much money does shoot inflation up, and uh, you know, with prices going up, with with people uh, buying so much, 
that would also push inflation up. So we we definitely need to keep an eye on inflation. But uh, other than that, I right now I, I see nothing but good. But I am curious to see what you think too. And if you disagree with me, I would like to know. And I you know all points are valid. I'd I'd like to hear what you have.